Okay, before we begin, let's set this rule. The Avengers must use the Infinity Stones to undo the decimation. There is no other way. But if time travel is impossible in this what if, how will the Avengers get their hands on the Infinity Stones? Well, it's time to get creative and sciency. In Endgame, Thanos destroyed the stones. But that's kind of the thing. You can't really destroy the stones. It was confirmed by the Russo brothers that Thanos reduced the stones into atoms, meaning that the stones still exist in the universe, just not as solid rocks. But they are still present on an atomic level. And it's a good thing that the MCU has a hero that can go subatomic. Yeah, when Ant-Man travels into the quantum realm, he shrinks to a size that is smaller than an atom. And since the stones were reduced to atoms, Ant-Man's shrinking technology is the only way to find the stones on an atomic level. The Infinity Stones emit a specific cosmic radiation which can be traced. In 2012's Avengers, Tony Stark and Bruce Banner were able to track down the Tesseract using its gamma radiation. So maybe they can use the same technique to locate the atoms of the stones. I'm not sure if real world science applies here. Tony Stark figured out time travel in one evening. So I guess when it comes to science in the MCU, you just need to roll with it. Besides, when talking about quantum mechanics, the possibilities might be limitless. So yeah, that's the main idea for this what if, but don't worry, it gets more interesting from here. Okay, so with this what if, let's talk about the first major change in the movie. Let's just ignore the strange rules of time in the quantum realm and say that Scott Lang was trapped in there for an actual five years. This way, we limit the time travel possibility, but also, if Ant-Man was indeed stuck in the quantum realm for five years, he will have a better understanding of the dimension, which will be crucial for this what if. Janet Van Dyne was trapped in the quantum realm for 30 years, and now she is an expert when it comes to the tiny dimension, not to mention her new powers. So it'll be beneficial for Scott to have a more important role in the movie. Anyway, Ant-Man will be able to emerge from the quantum realm after five years, this time without any help from rats. Ant-Man should figure it out on his own. One thing leads to another, and the heroes will realize that the Infinity Stones still exist, but only on an atomic level. It is very hard to locate them, but still possible with the right technology and understanding. Back in Infinity War, Shuri scanned the Mind Stone in an attempt to remove it from Vision's forehead. And uh, with Wakandan technology, let's assume that she scanned the stone on an atomic level. And I'm sure that Okoye will allow the heroes to use Shuri's findings. Not to mention, back in Age of Ultron, Tony scanned the scepter that contained the Mind Stone, which allowed him to create Ultron. So that'll come in handy as well. Iron Man, Wakanda, and Ant-Man all have impressive technology, something that should give the heroes the ability to track the atoms of the stones. Plus, uh, let's not forget that Professor Hulk knows a thing or two about radiation. Also, I'm sure that Asgardian magic could come into play as well. Don't forget, the MCU established that Odin clearly had some connection to the Infinity Stones. And maybe that crucial information could be passed down to Thor with some Asgardian magic. Okay, so the Avengers can track the atoms of the stones. But that's the easy part. The hard part is to rebuild the atoms into rock form. Atoms are, uh... Well, there are a lot of them. When trying to quantify atoms, you end up with some really crazy numbers. And uh, since we're talking about the Infinity Stones, which likely have more atoms than stars, the task of assembling all of those atoms might be close to impossible. But it's still achievable with the right amount of technology, magic, and of course, plot convenience. So the way I see it playing out is that we'll have two teams. Team 1 will consist of Iron Man, Captain America, Professor Hulk, Black Widow, Ant-Man, and Hawkeye. This team will go subatomic and locate the atoms of the stones. Thor, Captain Marvel, Rocket, Nebula, and War Machine will travel into space to learn about the true nature of the stones, so they could understand how to rebuild them. The MCU never really explained the history of the stones. There is so much that is still unknown about them, and maybe this could be the perfect opportunity to shed some light on the mystery. And so, the space team will go to places where the stones were hidden and learn their history and their true nature. Both teams will have epic and emotional journeys through space and the quantum realm. Eventually, they will learn more about the stones and how to reassemble them. Also, remember that Asgardian magic? Well, maybe it could be the key to reassembling the stones. Thor blames himself for everything that happened. 
He failed to kill Thanos when it mattered and allowed him to wipe out half of all life in the universe. This is why he let himself go so much in the movie, he was punishing himself. But after understanding the stones better, Thor will realize that he might have the power to reassemble the stones. Atri was able to forge Stormbreaker from just a few pieces of Uru, the power of a dying star, and Groot's arm. And Stormbreaker is a pretty powerful weapon. There is clearly some serious space magic involved. Maybe we're talking about the Odin Force here. Not only does the axe allow Thor to summon the Bifrost, but its energy was so powerful that it was able to resist the power of all six stones. And that last part might be the key to reassembling the stones. If Stormbreaker's energy can resist the cosmic power of the stones, it might also be the very thing that could recreate them. Also, Captain Marvel's powers, the Quantum Realm itself, Iron Man's tech, and Vibranium could all come into play as the combined efforts of the Avengers will bring the stones back. After that, the movie will play out mostly the same. Professor Hulk will snap his fingers to bring back the Dusted, which will lead to the big climactic battle. In the end, Tony will still sacrifice himself and use the stones to save the universe from Thanos. Oh, uh, speaking of the Mad Titan, without time travel, let's explain how Thanos can still be in the movie. Well, the best way to do this is to just not kill Thanos in the first 20 minutes. I made a video about this thing already, so I won't go into all the details here. But the main thing is that Thor won't kill Thanos at the start of Endgame. Instead, Thanos will be taken prisoner. By the time we get to the climax, Thanos will escape and get ready for the final battle. So, Thanos can still clash with the heroes even without time travel. Now this is all well and good, but I will be the first one to admit that it is all very sciency. The time travel stuff in Endgame wasn't just about collecting the stones from the past. It was a plot device that allowed the Avengers to have emotional moments. Tony being able to say goodbye to his father was a key scene for the end of his arc in the MCU. I never got to say goodbye to Dad. I never got to say goodbye to my father. The same goes for Thor, who was able to reunite with his mother and get a new perspective about his life. But there is still a way for something similar to happen in this What If version. Perhaps the heroes will somehow find themselves inside the Soul World. Since the Soul Stone's atoms are still out there, it means that the Soul World realm is still intact. The Soul World was only hinted at in Infinity War, but there is clearly so much more to the realm. Thanos saw a younger version of Gamora when he visited Soul World. And in a deleted scene from Endgame, Tony Stark got a chance to talk with a grown-up version of his daughter. The Soul World could be this spiritual realm that allows you to reunite with loved ones. Spirits of both the living and the dead. But what does this all mean for the end of the Infinity Saga? Avengers Endgame came to an end with Tony and Natasha's death, and Steve going back in time to return the stones and to reunite with Peggy. So Tony will still die, but I'm not so sure about Black Widow. Without the whole Voromir thing, she could still be alive and well at the end of the movie. However, without time travel, what happens to the Stones or Captain America? Well, it's possible that Doctor Strange will make the call to either hide or destroy the Stones. They are too dangerous, especially now that everyone in the universe knows how powerful they are. Maybe the heroes will agree to simply reduce the Stones to atoms once again. Wanda is capable of that, and I'm sure that Captain Marvel will be more than happy to lend a hand. But, perhaps before destroying the stones, Doctor Strange could do Steve a solid and use the Time Stone to send him back in time. So Steve could spend his life with Peggy in the past. And uh, yeah, I realized that by using the Time Stone like this, I broke my no time travel rule, but I only used it here in the end. You can't end the movie without Steve having his dance with Peggy, we need that happy ending. And so, this is how Endgame could have played out without time travel. Of course, there are other ways for it to happen, and, you know, maybe we'll explore them in the future. I gotta be honest, originally I was gonna use the multiverse as the solution. I planned to do a what if where the Avengers will travel to other universes to collect the Infinity Stones. But the Infinity Stones are exclusive to their respective universe. Meaning that if you take the Infinity Stones from your own universe and travel to another one, they won't work. So that's why I didn't use that idea. But if you want to see a what if video where I use the multiverse in Endgame, let me know and we will figure out a way to make it work. 